Hey guys, it's Matty OW. Today we're going to be answering some of the most frequently asked questions that I get in the AIM training community. Hopefully this video will help out uh, newer players and clear things up for good. So let's get started. Which grip is the best to use? Should I be fingertip aiming? Should I be using claw grip, etc.? I've believed in this for a very long time, that grip doesn't really matter all that much. The main thing you should be prioritizing with the way you grip your mouse is comfort. Comfort, health, and longevity above all else. This is how I grip my mouse. It's really just the first natural position that I first held a mouse in and it's never changed. And it doesn't need to. Uh, don't ever think your grip. If there really is a better grip to be used over the one you find most comfortable, it's probably going to net you the smallest difference. It's like nothing even changed. What sends should I be using? Do I use the same sends as in my main game? Ah yes indeed, the sensitivity question. In my opinion, you do not need to use the same sends in the trainer as you have in game. There isn't any specific sensitivity I can recommend anyone use. Uh, for me, I use different sensitivities on a per scenario basis, uh, not just between two different games. Obviously, this will cause some people to be like, oh, well, it messes up my muscle memory if I train on a different sensitivity. And that leads to the next question. Will doing X hurt my muscle memory? No, odds are, whatever X is in this context, it will not hurt or diminish your muscle memory. It's just a myth, at least in the way that FPS players discuss it. I tend to think of muscle memory as more of you instinctively remembering the sequence of actions to execute to accomplish something. Say you're playing Tracer in Overwatch, and you want to perform a blink stick pulse bomb combo, a really flashy way of using her ultimate. The timings of when to press the ult button and blink, the sequence of how you do that combo, that's muscle memory. When it comes to aiming though, we tend to believe that we can simply forget what it's like playing on a certain sense, but in reality you you don't. Our brains have this amazing ability to adapt quickly. When we change our sensitivity, we can adapt to it relatively quickly, and it's also good for us as aimers because it allows us to get a better understanding of the other muscle groups that we might not have been utilizing as frequently on a lower or higher sensitivity. After how long do you see changes in game? This is something that's different for each person and depends heavily on the amount of time you spend in the trainer. It also has to do with the scenarios you're playing. If your main game is CSGO, you won't be seeing as much benefit from just spamming ascended tracking variants compared to someone playing box target click small. It all has to do with how much time you spend on high game representative scenarios where the nature or the design of the scenario directly relates to or mimics the kind of aiming that you'll be doing in the main game. For how long should I train? Again, this varies per person. There's also the need to bring in the question of how healthy it is to train for long periods of time. It depends on what your goals are. If you're just warming up for a big session in your main game, maybe about 15 to 20 minutes might do it. If you're more serious about aim training, maybe something longer up to an hour might be good. Others might go longer. Usually I never recommend that anyone train for more than an hour and a half because if you go for too long, it can be very straining and unhealthy. Obviously I'm a hypocrite because I play nothing but aim training for up to 5-6 hours a day when I'm on break, but I really don't recommend you guys do that. Take care of yourselves. If you're running on 3 hours trying to hit a single score, give it a rest, come back another day. I promise you it will be better than just continuing to grind and hurting your wrist. Why does it seem like aim training doesn't always apply in game even after a long time? There could be myriad reasons for aim training not to produce results, even after months to even years of doing it. Two critical reasons come to mind. One, you could be doing the wrong scenarios and expecting to find benefit off of doing something that will never give you any. Or two, 
your mindset about aim training could be flawed. Aim training works in its subtlety. You won't be able to immediately see the benefits of perfecting your form because human performance is intrinsically um, inconsistent. Aim training will not transform you into an aimbot overnight, or even over a hundred nights. It's something that comes gradually and is a slow transformative process. You need to see the smaller details of your gameplay, the shots that might not be final blows, the moments where you aimed amazingly but still failed the play overall, to know for sure if what you're doing is working. Will a dirty mouse pad affect in a significant way my performance? I would say yes, if your pad is dirty it might feel weird to play on, but then again you can just clean it. The main essence of this question will probably be, will an old pad affect performance? And the answer to that would be that it depends on the pad. Some pads like the Artisan Hien last for ages. Others like my old HyperX Fury Speed lasted like a few months. I don't really deep clean my mouse pads, I just wipe them down with a cloth. Should you use your arm to aim, or your wrist? I don't know where the concept of wrist aimers versus arm aimers came from, but let's just make this clear. You need to use all of your arm to aim. All of its parts. The fingers, the wrist, the forearm, all the way up to the elbow. And even the shoulder. They all need to be part of a well-oiled machine. Obviously, with a high sense, it makes sense that you will be using more of your wrists and fingertips but that doesn't fully exclude your forearm. Beyond sensitivity, you also need to be aware of what parts of your arm to use for certain types of aiming. The most obvious example is reactive tracking. You can't just use your wrist in air scenarios. You need to be able to transition from wrist to arm aiming and then back to wrist aiming to deal with a lot of the fast circling motions that airbots perform. Should I focus on accuracy or speed? This is another thing I don't understand. This is such a common question, yet I feel like the answer is self-explanatory. The answer is yes, or both. Why restrict yourself by choosing one or the other? Proper aim training requires focus on both accuracy and speed. There's not even a choice to be made here. You can't focus on solely speed, because then you just constantly miss, and you can't focus on solely accuracy, because then you just end up going too slow. I have no clue where this idea started, but we need to start automatically answering this one for ourselves. It's both you people. Both accuracy and speed. Where should I look when aiming in X scenario? This is different depending on the scenario. Usually the rule goes if the targets are very small and require a lot of visual effort to confirm that you're on them, you would want to be looking more at the crosser to ensure that you're going to hit the target. But if the targets are much larger, and moving relatively quickly or close to you, you always want to keep your eyes on the target. For the majority of aim training scenarios, the latter is the case. How do I stop jittering or shaking? You have to determine the cause of it. Are you naturally shaky? Are you tensing too much or death gripping the mouse? Are you playing at an uncomfortable angle, or at the edge of your range of motion? There are a host of ways to fix these issues, but those are usually the reasons for shakiness. If you want to really fix it, you should be playing precision tracking scenarios at a high sensitivity or low FOV, or both, to perceive the errors and force yourself to adapt. Should I use mouse sensitivity A or B? 99% of the time, this will be a it depends type of question. And it's another this or that. Don't restrict yourself between two options when there are many. The sensitivity you should be using depends on the scenario, what you're comfortable with, what kinds of aiming styles do you have, the main game you play. All of those things could be factored into what sends you choose, or none of them. Sensitivity is really, really up to you. Where can I find routines? You can find routines simply by asking around, either in an AIM training discord, the FPS AIM trainer reddit, or even by just searching for them directly. I have some playlists in my discord. Lowgravity56's Voltaic Daily Improvement Method is famous for its usefulness in grinding benchmarks. Voltaic has made a lot of great routines for every purpose in FPS you can think of. Are routines even good? 
The answer to this question is quite debatable, actually. Routines are useful due to the structuring and goal grinding that they provide. The format of moving through a specific training regiment with reps is very beneficial, especially when you want to be strict on the amount of time you spend. I, however, have stopped relying on this structure, and now I play whatever I want. So if you're a player who likes freedom and exploring the kinds of scenarios that fit what you may want to play on a daily basis, routines might not be for you. If you like to be more structured and hold yourself to certain goals uh, to achieve, routines should be right up your alley. Are movement scenarios worthless? No. A resounding no, especially if you're trying to improve at your main game. I've seen many players call movement scenarios useless, and I've always disagreed with them. Strafing is a completely different mechanical technique from aiming, but they're not separate in practice. In any real FPS situation, you need to know how to move and aim at the same time. Movement scenarios provide the perfect isolated environment for you to practice this essential skill. The main criticism is that in movement scenarios, you can easily cheese for score by constantly mirroring the bot movements or strafing left when the bot goes right and right when the bot goes left. While this is true, the real purpose of movement scenarios is for you to experiment, to move in complex ways that are as if you were treating the bot as a real opponent shooting back at you. That's how to make proper use of movement scenarios, not to cheese for the highest score. Do you do coaching? Not at the moment, at least not publicly. I will let you guys know if I'm going to be offering coaching when I do. Are you planning on using your superior mouse control to compete in any game? No. At least not for now and the games that are currently out. The games that I enjoy are virtually abandoned, which really saddens me. But it makes sense because hardcore death grinders of arena shooters do not make enough profits to satisfy the greedy pockets of AAA companies. My aim can only take me so far in games like Overwatch, and I have no real desire to try and learn uh, the other dimensions of that game. It just doesn't give me the same kind of joy I get when I abuse my aim to fully invalidate someone else's plays. To me, outsmarting my opponent is just a one-time thing. They won't be tricked again, but with aim, they would have to train for hours to beat me there, and it's not just something they can simply look out for next time. Unfortunately, Overwatch favors those who play the meta, the strats, and the right heroes to win over having superior mechanical skill, which is why I no longer take the game seriously. Maybe I will make use of my mouse control someday, but not today. Are genetics a big part of aiming? No, not a big part at least. With genetics there comes uh, two things. Reaction time and physical longevity. Both things that, when favoring you, will help you quite a bit in getting started with aim training, but will not determine your success overall. Sure, genetics, or as some people may brand it, talent, might put you a little bit ahead of the starting line, but that doesn't mean that with some more work and dedication, you can sprint farther ahead of those people who got a head start. That's how I tend to think of my journey. Sure, I had tons of hours of uh, UT 2004, an aim intensive arena FPS, and good reaction time from playing CSGO, so I naturally got a bit of a head start when I started playing Kovacs. But the success I've found comes purely from the hours of grinding that I did to fully learn the game of aim training. Is it possible to achieve perfect aim? I'd imagine, yes it is. We're definitely nowhere close to it, not even miles from it. But there's no reason to say it's impossible. I'm sure that with a few generations of aim trainer mains, evolution will take the reins and someday produce a player who is something we can currently only visualize by using the free play aimbot feature in Kovacs. How to stay focused at all times while aim training? Honestly, you don't really need to fully focus on the task of aim training. You just need to do it and be conscious of how you're doing it. Staying focused can be tough, but you should vary what you're doing in the moment to keep yourself alert. Don't sit on the same scenario for hours on end. Alternate between two variants of one or try playing a separate category. Most importantly though, if you feel fatigued physically or mentally, stop and try again later. 
Get good sleep and be healthy. What are the best ways to overcome plateaus? The best way to overcome plateaus is by changing something. Anything. This can be as small as playing a different scenario, or as big as altering your mindset and switching every routine out. As long as you make a change. This ensures things don't become stale and gives you different perspectives on aiming. I would recommend you challenge yourself more. No, this doesn't necessarily mean picking a harder scenario variant with faster movement or smaller target size. This can also mean pushing your own speed, clicking more in each run of a multi-target scenario, or creating sub-challenges for you uh, to satisfy, such as I'm going to land every flick directly, or I'm going to try and edge track this bot entirely. What routine is the best for improving aim? There is no best routine that I can name that will encompass all parts of aiming and all the skills you need to excel. It varies per player and is really up to you to find and decide. However, in my experience, the best routine would likely be one that you create yourself based on your own weaknesses and the skills that you want to target. These are just some of the most common questions I get from the aim training community. To conclude, I want to state that I didn't just make this video to list off answers to a bunch of questions. Many of these questions I chose specifically to prove a point. Notice how the answers to a majority of these questions are, it depends, or it's different based on, or it varies. Notice how most of the more general questions about aim training usually end up this way. There are two important things to note about this fact. The first is that aim training and its value is obtained and measured differently for each and every player who comes to it. One player, whether it be a Voltaic Iron player, or me, a player who hits daily Astro level scores, simply can't give direct recommendations for a large number of people without specific context. What I mean by this is that aim coaches are an extremely valuable resource if they do it right. Their job is to work with you, examine your strengths and weaknesses, and understand you mechanically as a player. So if you truly are clueless about how to approach the issues in aim training, aim coaching is 100% a valid path to choose, as long as you choose good, reputable coaches, like the ones from Voltaic's main roster. The second and most important point is that there is no secret ingredient. There is no secret ingredient. There is not one routine, one sensitivity, one mouse grip, one setup, one method, one this or that, that will be sufficient to make you a good aimer, and there never will be. The only surefire way to do it is by working hard, putting your hours into it, challenging yourself, pushing through plateaus, the mountains, the brick walls, falling and getting up again, playing a thousand runs and never getting a new high score, getting sniped, re-sniping, and getting sniped again, strategizing, sweating, and hopefully one day rejoicing that you proved yourself. And this is how it is for any esport, any game, really any field.